Hello, and thanks for coming along to And We Have an Office Dog, the digital agency podcast where we talk to agency owner directors and learn more about what makes them tick. From the things that make them similar to the things they'd rather have known sooner, where they've had success, and where they've learned some hard lessons. All will be revealed. With your host, Chris Simmons, the agency coach. And he'll be talking to a different awesome agency person in each episode, asking them four questions and seeing where the conversation takes us over the next 25 minutes. Okay, so let us begin. Over to you, Chris. Hello, thanks very much, voiceover guy. And we've got on the podcast today, Himani. How are we doing? I'm doing great, Chris. Thank you so much. How are you? No, um, good. And it's lovely to see you again just after Brighton SEO in April. Um, so when this goes out to uh, to air, it will probably be the, the September edition of Brighton SEO. So hopefully I'll be seeing you very soon. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Fingers crossed. So so tell us, who are you? What do you do at Missive Digital? Tell us all about the agency. Right. So, you know, uh, I would say that, you know, bes- before coming to directly talk about Missive Digital, let me give you a little background of where I come from. Please. So I did my uh, IT. So I'm a, a IT graduate. And uh, so I had a couple of knowledge around, you know, programming languages. I had the, uh, you know, uh, understanding of uh, how technology works, uh, the mm-hmm. programming languages and the technology that works around the websites and all of those things. So I was, uh, you know, uh, pretty much aware about that. And even, you know, uh, in that point in time, I was not too much uh, into the coding stuff. I more likely loved the, you know, uh, creating the algorithms, processes mm. uh, and, you know, software after project man management i mean uh, that was something my favorite uh, you know subject software project management so i loved that and i was pretty much uh, happy doing it so i because i was little uh, you know less excited about coding i uh, you know had an option right after the graduation that whether i should go for you know php course or a search engine optimization course because that was trending in india uh, yeah. when i graduated right so it was that kind of thing and i thought that okay php would be too technical and too code stuff so i would say okay let me stay away from that let me do a little course uh, from search engine optimization uh, thing so i was like i did that uh, from a local uh, training uh, center uh, they were also into agency as well so while doing that course in one and a half month i believe they hired me uh, as their first, uh, you know, person whom they have hired from the training side of the project that they had. So, uh, like, uh, they hired me and I, uh, within six months, I was uh, appreciated. I became the team lead. Uh, you know, I started training new team members. And, uh, oh, my God. So, that was great. Well, and hang on. That's what, how- you're, what you're saying is you're a very good but massive nerd. <laughs> Yeah, could be. Yeah, could be. <laughs> yeah. So, what brought you to yeah, like, to set up Missive then? What, what, where, where did that link happen? Right. So, you know, while I was working this, I mean, I guess twenty twelve and twenty thirteen, both were the years where this Panda and Penguin updates came. Right. Mm, so I remember that it. Shattered. I still yeah, have nightmares. <laughs> exactly exactly i still remember that i was you know serving a lot of clients i was a team lead i was managing people and th- those things happened so it almost affected the entire industry mm-hmm. uh, that th- that happened worldwide but i guess even indian was there and uh, we had a lot of uh, here uh, local ahmedabad based agencies were quite closed so it was very difficult like because i took a little break after that uh, you know working in the agency mm-hmm. for my uh, family thing and uh, when i wanted to return to the seo industry again it was like you know i was uh, very much uh, um, you know into that thing that okay there are no agencies out there i have to struggle i have to you know prove my worth that yeah. no i yeah. am uh, someone who can contribute so at that point in time i tried experimenting with the content stuff so i started writing content i used to write poems in the college and i used my that talent to create uh, some blogs articles <laughs> those kind of things so yeah so it- i mixed both of them 
it was a natural natural fit in a sense to to start going as you do yeah exactly so the, it, it was that kind of thing and, and how so long has the agency was, been running uh so agency i, I mean if i talk about missive missive is like you know uh, it's just two and a half years old mm -hmm. but my entrepreneurship journey started when i saw my first content getting onto the featured snippets yeah like in 2015. okay yeah i know i know the feeling um similar kind of thing you know you you, you get a um s something happens and it's like a, a switch that goes in your head and you go hmm, i can do i i like this i'm good at it i enjoy it and i can make money from it so i'm going to turn this into a business right absolutely so that was the time when i shifted from full-time job to the consulting and then agency happened so what what would you say since the agency started um has been one of your biggest successes that you've seen okay so if i talk about the biggest success um i i would consider uh you know uh, success as a different uh, metric uh, mm. and not in the numbers of you know sales yeah yeah, yeah. And, you know the numbers the results that we achieve but yeah so number one success was that you know the moment uh we announced that okay now himani kankaria has a team we were uh, i mean bombarded with a lot of inquiries so that was one of the biggest success metrics oh, wow. that I consider. So this, yeah. so it's, it, so uh, as soon as people realised that you had a team behind you, they were ready to yes. go. That's that's cool. So you, you almost had a bit of a waiting list in a sense. Absolutely, yeah. So Amazing. I already had my personal brand, right? People knew somewhere that okay, this lady is doing something. Uh, you mm. know, uh, she's based in India, and they are doing something. But the moment I announced that I have a team, I mean, uh, I found that there were people who were silently observing what this lady has been doing. Mm, mm. That's awesome. That's that's awesome. So it, it kind of um, it the second that you you officially kind of put the flag down and said, "This is where I am. This is the this is a business now with a team." There was a queue yeah. at the door, so to speak. So that must have made it like for the first few years, like it must have been. Um, well, really easy from a sales point of view because they've come to you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So I was like, okay, the effort that I had made, uh, like say seven years, eight years earlier, I guess that has uh, helped me uh, mm. get you know very good uh, like uh, sales pipeline for uh, Missive. So is there is there anything that you in in this journey that you've that you've been on? Is there anything that you, if you could go back in time and give yourself a piece of advice? Um, either before you started the agency or even when you got that first featured snippet and decided to be an entrepreneur. Um, what piece of advice would you give yourself? When would you give yourself that advice? Right. So if I have to give myself an yeah. advice. You've gone back yeah, in time, yeah. like Superman style, back in uh, soup, around the planet a millions of times to... To wind back the clock. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So I uh, always uh, give this thing that, you know, uh, I wanted to work on, you know, core, just, uh, you know, very core SEO agency, uh, like, you know, larger agencies, mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. uh, where I have worked is corporates and I have worked as a, uh, you know, at a very small agency, right? So I had never experienced how these larger agencies manage their projects, manage their yeah. timelines and all of those things because we uh you know being a small agency at the moment and we are actually you know positioning ourselves as that you know we are kind of a people that you know they have a small yep. but they are like you know firecracker uh yep. you know it's kind of yeah that so we want to position them uh uh, uh at uh i mean this way but uh yeah so you know uh, i wanted to experience the culture mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. the larger agencies have when the team grows yep right so that is something that, you know, I would give myself uh, that advice that, hey, Himani, you should have gone to a larger agency, worked, uh, you know, yeah. understood their processes and uh, maybe... Seen uh, the mistakes that they make. Exactly, yeah. exactly. That would have saved my time, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah there's, there, I think, though, I don't know about you, but I often find that the best lessons are the ones where I make the mistake. <laughs> <laughs> they, okay. they usually cost a few pounds to to, to solve, but um, but I learn them much quicker. And um, when you have to, you know, kind of um, take the punch in the face yourself. Um, but you know, it's it, it 
you're right in what you say i think that if you if you're if you had taken experience in a larger agency you'd have learned some more things um you'd about the process the way that they handle it and stuff like that but also potentially um you might have missed an opportunity because you you didn't start your agency when you did that queue of people at the door might not be there so if you weigh these two things would you give that advice to yourself uh i guess now you got a point mm -hmm. you, uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly so now that reminds me of my second success metric is that you know there are a couple of uh you know clients that mm. we have acquired i mean not acquired but yeah we have onboarded these are the people who are some very big shots mm. and they have you know really had bad experiences with the larger agencies and then they have come to us yeah so that i mean that's great because in a sense because you didn't have the large agency experience you might have uh chosen a different way of running the agency yes. which has led you into a position where you retain clients but you also get clients from the ones that have been upset with the large agencies that makes sense so okay. would you say that um like the experience that you've had to date when you set up the agency over the course of time, do you think there's like something that you kind of wish you'd done sooner? Um, anything that you've done that you've gone, ah, oh, we should have done that on the first day. Right. I have this uh, very, this thing of, you know, processes. Mm. Uh, because as I said that, you know, I didn't had the experience of working in the larger mm -hmm. uh, agencies, right? So that, uh, you know, didn't bring me uh, with the thought that, okay, I'm starting up an agency. I need to set the process of each and everything. Yeah. Right. So that was something that, you know, I started doing it when I uh, believed that, OK, now we are having a lot of clients mm -hmm. and, you know, uh, I cannot be uh, there for everyone. Right. So then the team started scaling up and all of those things at that point in time, I realized that, OK, if I have these processes set, then they'd, my team would, uh, you know, doesn't need me every time. Yeah. So the things can go autonomous. Mm. And so, yeah. Building a thing that you don't need to be in, but you want to be in, is a is a is a dream that all agency owners have. How how much how much of a uh, of the of the doing of the um, how much of the um, in the business time do you spend versus on the business building it? Okay, so I would say that you know, uh, I guess I am involved almost uh, fifty fifty percent of the time mm -hmm. uh, because you know I have allocated uh, my processes, I have allocated my time accordingly, mm -hmm. so that you know, um, I mean, every client that we have, I'm always involved in their strategic thing. I'm involved uh, whenever there are you know monthly mm -hmm. strategic calls or quarterly the business level goals, marketing yeah. goals, and all of those things. So I'm involved there as well. Also, you know, uh, like since uh, January this year, I have started taking off uh, some of my hands uh, from the content review because we are core content driven SEO agency. Yeah. So content is something that, you know, we are like really, really aggressive on that. Yeah. And we have larger review processes for a content. Right. So uh, uh, like there was still time in January till January. I used to do the last review of a content. So it's something and I can imagine, I mean, even if it's been reviewed a few times internally, that's still a lot of content, right? You, you're not um, you're, you're producing a lot of content all the time. So how did you keep up with that? Like late nights? <laughs> <laughs> Lots of coffee? Absolutely. I, <laughs> I guess everything I would say everything that you know, uh, and I'm kind of a person that you know, who loves uh, early morning uh, mm. thing, right? So I wake up early at seven. I mean, I wake up early at like six thirty or something, and yeah. I start my work like seven seven thirty mm -hmm. in the morning. So those uh, two hours before my morning sync up call, I you know uh, review everything uh, that needs my peace of mind, that needs my uh, creativity, that needs my a lot of uh, attention, right? Yeah. So like I allocate that morning time to that, and then late evenings. So. I've got a question for you that's not normally a question I ask in the podcast because most of the time um, I'm talking to people from the UK and this is my first uh, recording with someone from oh, India. Wow. So I'm really excited, first of all, um, primarily because there's a massive audience of very smart people in India and they should all buy from the OMG Centre. Um, but 
the the question I've got is you're quite well known from my perspective in the UK and the US uh, ends of the market um, in, from an SEO point of view. How how have you done that? Um, because there's often a, a misunderstanding about the the, the the deliverables and the types of services from from um, from from India. So. You know, I, I I know that you're you're smart. I know you've got a great team. I know you do great work. So how have you translated that so that then you know your your um, I feel like it's the wrong word to use, but accepted in 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 the the, the global scheme of things. Right. So uh, you know uh, that was the struggle, and even that struggle that we Indians face is something which is very common. That you know it becomes really difficult for other uh, companies from other countries mm. to understand how we operate. But that's something that you know we have kept really uh, this thing very honest and open conversation, even with the team internally mm. as well as with the clients as well. That these are the processes, and this is what we are going to do. So, you know, I would say that uh, most of the conversions that happen is because of the communication that we have done with them. Mm. So even if we are giving them the proposals, the proposals have all the information, the approach that we are going to do. Even we explain that, the you know, most challenges is with the, you know, you don't mix up with the intent, right? Yeah. Uh, the qu queries, keywords, intent mm -hmm. and all of those things. Then you don't do the, you know, uh, black hat uh, kind yeah. of things and then uh old school link building activities and all of those things right yeah so when we don't talk all of those things when we clear out these things during the first discovery call or the second one mm. i guess their doubts are clear mm -hmm. and I then they see and that and that's and and like you say it's a struggle but you you've been i think you've been quite successful knowing what i know i think you've been quite successful with with achieving that so i guess clear communication and consistently clear communication that yeah. we deliver good work um is 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 great so i'd say that's also a success absolutely, back to the first absolutely. question there you see <laughs> <laughs> that's right that's right so, so throughout the 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 growth of the business what what do you think um like looking forward into the future do you think what do you think like might be um uh, your next big challenge what's what what are you looking at on the horizon what's the what's the aim uh, so, uh, you know, the aim is to, uh, you know, like even we have started working with a lot of, uh, you know, small businesses mm -hmm. and medium sized businesses as well. Till date, we were not working. I mean, we, our target audience was always the larger agencies or larger corporates mm -hmm. or the unicorns, the SaaS companies and all of them. Right. Mm -hmm. But now uh, we have started uh, working uh, and taking the projects for small and medium sized businesses as well, because we are seeing that, you know, there are a lot of agencies out there that, you know, they are still using those old school uh, SEO techniques, which doesn't work. And, you know, uh, I feel for them because uh, mm -hmm. it's something that, you know, even uh, we are not a larger uh, company, right? We are also a small company and small companies also need good work, right? Yeah. So the aim is that, you know, we want to become that one name for any business who is looking for open, honest, and transparent communication yeah. with any service that they take with us? And 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 I think I think you're very very um, right here. There's an awful lot of small businesses which don't know what to buy because they don't have the technological maturity or can't afford the you know the big fees or um, they don't just don't have the the capacity to do, to do it. And um, oftentimes they'll buy from the wrong people or they'll automate something or they'll duplicate something let's say and the pandas come and get them um and uh and 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 if there's a way that those smaller businesses can have a, a access to this then then that's that's really cool Absolutely. Even small businesses have this thing that they have their in-house team, but there is no person who would, you know, strategize for them. So we have recently uh, even, you know, launched uh, uh, one new engagement model where, you know, we provide the marketing strategies. We provide that, you know, how uh, each of the marketing channel needs to be done yeah. so that your SEO performs, your all the other marketing channel performs. So we become the marketing thinkers, the mm. marketing strategists for those businesses who have the team, but they don't have the approach. They don't have the you know right strategy to be implemented on. 
Mm. Right. So that's something that we have started, uh, you know, doing and we want to touch base every business who, who is, you know, very passionate, uh, uh, a business owner who is very passionate. They want to grow, but they don't have the right set yeah. of, uh, you know, understanding. Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, for the ho hopefully this is true for the most part, anyone who's running their own business and it's even if it's a baby brand new business, there's a passion and a desire to grow. And I don't know how many people I've spoken to in the past who still don't even know that SEO is a thing. And I feel like that's strange to people like us, but I'm pretty confident that uh, that they, they would be at least asking, like, how do I get found? How do I get found? And then find that information and then ask the questions. But giving them access to, to something that, that is an opportunity to, to grow is, is a really good lofty aim because there's an awful lot of small businesses around the world. Um, in the UK, I think there's uh, two and a half million or something. No, not this. 250,000 I can't remember now that's the totally wrong numbers I'll look it up after this <laughs> um so so if um if someone's listening to this podcast right now they're about to start their own agency or they've just started an agency and they're waiting for your nugget of advice what one piece of advice would you give them to to take away uh I would say that you know um uh no matter whatever happens, right? Even you are facing, say, budget crunch, or even if you are facing, uh, you know, issues with uh, the, uh, say, getting more customers or anything, don't change or, you know, uh, I would say that um, uh, don't deviate from the values that you have created mm. for your business. Yeah. Because what happens is it is very easy when you see a downfall in your you know business or something like that, you might tend to change your values considering that no, you need to change this because you want to scale your business. You want to scale your, uh, grow your business. No, mm -hmm. you don't need to do that because your values will define who you are and how you will run your agency. So really really good um and you know this is i think episode 65 i think and we've had lots of different pieces of advice and that this that's a really important piece of advice to listen to if you are listening to this now it's, it's really easy to say yes to some money it's really easy to say yes to a logo uh, that you want on your on your creds deck um but if they don't fit your values it's going to hurt both sides and it's going to cost more than you'd imagine um and i think that's a really good piece of advice there Thank you. Thank you. And no. I, if I have to ask you, Chris, what would be your piece of advice? Um, know your numbers. Um, it's boring, but know your numbers. Know how to no, understand how cash works. Um, most, most education systems around the world don't teach you finance. They teach you mathematics. Um, learn the numbers and how they work because it's. I I've, I've, can't tell you how many agencies I see that... Um, have loads and loads of revenue and they're great and they're going, we're making millions and, and they're brilliant, but they don't know how cash flow works. And six, eight, ten months down the road, they're still making lots of revenue, but they haven't realized they're not making any profit. And it's eating away at their cash reserves and they don't know it because loads of revenue comes in on top of all of the other things. And if you focus on where cash flow is and you focus on your profit margins, like work from a profit first perspective, then you keep your staff happy, you keep your staff paid, um, you keep your clients happy, and you make some money at the end of it. Um, but it, it, if you don't know your numbers, then you know you could have all the values in the world. <laughs> you don't have a business. Absolutely, absolutely. This is gold. I mean, this, <laughs> this, this is the best you know advice that you can give to any agency owner. Wonderful. Thank you so much for coming onto the podcast today, Himani. It's been brilliant to talk to you. Yes, it was an honor. Thank you so much for having me, Chris. You're welcome. And we'll have you on season two in about a year's time to talk about how great you've been d progressing and things like that in the last year. Oh, awesome. That would be great. There we go. Thanks very much and enjoy. Um, in the next episode, we'll be talking with another agency leader to hear their story and the lessons they've learned along the way. So thanks for listening in the meantime. <laughs>